Welcome to a new test and teardown video. This time it's another DIY. It's been a long time ago since I got some really cool DIY things into my lab. And here is a um, thing I really don't know yet what this is. It is called a KBR modulator. So what is that? It's beautifully made. Look at the aluminium and it's engraved. Really, really beautiful. So we got some signal in and out. We can set some attenuation, variable attenuation. We got some timing milliseconds. So it's probably just a gating, a variable gating kind of thing where you set how much it's gating something really really weird we have a uh, little attenuator here minus 20 db a trigger output that is very useful so we can put our scope on and see what is going on it looks like there's something that pushes on the top plate see the top chassis here it's yeah, we should definitely open and inspect. It looks a little bit old as well. So it is actually really, really well built inside. Oh, well, that is not a first timer who did this one. Look at this big piece of, I mean, the thickness. So that's really good for the potentiometers. And we've got those gearboxes, and they are really, really nice. And they are mounted together like that. Well, that is a, actually a little bit untraditional way to do that. And then they give you... A nice ratio and nice feeling. Also, they prevent. Uh, see now, and then it just spins. See, click. So it prevents you from dialing the shaft all over the place. So that is a good feeling. We got yeah one mega ohm. 2k2 and we've got some switches here for the max attenuation and this is variable attenuation how much it's going to attenuate and here it works like that so the signal goes probably straight through for this amount of time and that will be the time when this where the signal is attenuated is what i think it is so it's from 10 milliseconds to one second of delay without or with this attenuation and then one millisecond to 200 milliseconds with this signal i bet this is going to sound really really interesting so there's a little power supply rectifier and i bet these two little ic's you see right there well, that'll be positive and negative regulators of some sort this one is a uh, 556 and the 556 is very similar to the well-known 555 timer but this one is just a dual so you got two of them in one package and this of course explains the two circuits here on each side and the two different delays so they're simply coupled in a um, uh, oscillator where one delay is one potentiometer and the other delay is the other potentiometer, the poles and the uh, the time between them. And uh, here is a G, let's see, DG411. And uh, this one is from 87, the other one is from 84. So this one is a an analog switch and it's a little bit different from all the other analog switches you have seen before it's uh it's normally 
uh, normally closed contacts and when you have a high signal you disconnect the, um, the signal through each of the four uh, like sort of relays and the on resistance is only 25 ohms so it's a really really good analog switch and there's super super high isolation to the other switches when it's open or closed and all that so it's they really really found the best part for this job and all the little details here with the shielded cables and see the little ground wire and all that kind of stuff the way it's made show they know what they're doing oh and there's another thing i really want to show you let me see if i can get some light in here look at this side panel here this one let's see if i can focus can you see oh yes i don't know it is oh maybe it, maybe you can see this but I want to show the tin whiskers. See, we got metal hair sticking out from this piece of metal. They are like three or four millimeters long. So I better wash these. And this is what's causing all sorts of short circuits and stuff like that. That is really, really something. It's also on the other side. Hmm. But this also tells us a little bit about the age. So this is the signal that goes through this unit. I'll put a one kilohertz uh, sine wave through the unit. And this is the signal from the back. I'm just triggering on this and showing it. Can you see the LED here is a red, green, and it shows exactly what we're playing with here. See, blip, 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 blip. I kind of like that. So that is what it's doing. And at the moment, this is my variable attenuation. Oh, yeah, see? So this is what we got. Almost nothing and then a lot. But I also have maximum here. Yep, okay. And then this one is not doing anything. Okay, so it's a variable attenuation factor. And this is attenuation so more means like that ha, i bet this would sound really really weird what is going on here we can give it i'm just trying to learn how this works so green lamp means attenuation and red means it's not attenuating so here is my signal see the more and more signal time then you get more and more red if i give it a lot see it's more red and then i turn down the attenuation factor then it's almost red all the time I think this unit really, really works. So this is my timing. Let's see if it works. So I got 10 milliseconds per division. And this one is almost 10 millisecond. And the other way around, it should be 1 millisecond. Look at that. Let's crank down the timing here to 1 millisecond. And then... Here is about one millisecond, and since I'm running one kilohertz, this also works, and I can easily adjust this. <laughs> Man, this is a really, really cool unit.
So I think I'm more or less done with this uh, video and uh, I've been thinking a little bit about what is this? I mean, what was the main idea and intention for this? It is, of course, for a, a university or education facility. And I think this is a demonstration tool to put audio through this. It could be um, speech or even music or something like that. And then by dialing here, you can more or less uh, visualize or if using audio visualize uh, what happens when you sample or take smaller portions of a signal. And then how much do you really need to be able to understand? Uh, it could be uh, yeah, audio or something like that. And is, so... It will explain uh, digital sampling or analog sampling or if the medium uh, content and all that kind of stuff. I think it's it's quite interesting. I didn't, of course, uh, participate <laughs> in their lectures, so I can't say exactly what they've been talking about. But it gotta be something related uh, to continuity and uh, something like that. So uh, if you know exactly what this was used for or you got some more cool ideas, please comment and tell us. could be really interesting. Or maybe you've even seen this and know exactly what was the topic. Let's know. Let's know some more. Come on. See ya. Bye-bye.